Hey everyone, welcome back to another web hosting and WordPress video tutorial. In this video, we will take a look at the WP CLI or the WordPress command line interface. Um, using this tool, you can perform many WordPress uh, management actions or functions that you would normally do using the WordPress admin or by adding a variety of plugins to your WordPress website. Um, this is primarily used by uh, users that um, typically like to work on the command line to manage websites or manage software. However, this can be useful for certain situations for anyone that is managing WordPress websites and can also be a time saver uh, if you set up many WordPress websites and if you have repetitive actions that you need to take. Uh, so we'll take a look at five different use cases of the WP CLI in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so uh, to walk you through this tutorial, I'm going to use a sample WordPress instance that I've just started up. If you are going to run these commands on your production or live website, then I would highly suggest you make a backup prior to doing this. Um, majority of these commands will make changes to your database directly. And so if you have to revert back, then you'll want a, a fresh backup or a latest backup. And as a general best practice, you should always have a good backup of your WordPress websites. The Bitnami blueprint in Lightcell or on AWS uh, their blueprint already comes with the WP CLI already pre-installed. Um, if your WordPress server or instance does not have the WordPress CLI, WP CLI, then I'll link to instructions on how to get those installed. I'm not going to show you that in this tutorial. Uh, so I'll link to those on the web hosting for beginners.net post that will be accompanying this video. Um, so with that, I have SSH uh, into my Bitnami WordPress instance, um, and I'm using a um, SSH client called Bitvise, but you could um, also use the web-based uh, terminal, uh, SSH terminal that's provided in Lightcell, or just use your own favorite SSH client. Uh, but once you have logged in, what you will want to do is go to your WordPress installation folder. So on my server, it will be under stack, WordPress. And if I do an LS, this is where uh, WordPress is installed. And uh, let's just check what version of WP CLI we have installed. So to do that, we just type in WP CLI version. Uh, oh, I need to run this as a super user. Uh, so Bitnami requires that uh, WP CLI commands are run as super users. So what we will do is put sudo in front of that. So sudo WP CLI version, and we have version 2.5.0. So I believe if I go here, uh, the current stable release is 2.5.0. So as of recording uh, of this video, the latest version is 2.5.0. In case you have a an older version, you basically would want to type in an update command. So sudo wp cli update, and this would update uh, your CLI version to the latest version that's available. All right, so the first command that I wanted to show you is simply to list the WordPress scheduled jobs that come installed when you set up WordPress website or any custom cron jobs that you may have set up as well. If you wanted to do that without WP CLI, you would have to install a, a plugin to uh, list out the cron schedules as well as manage them. But with WP CLI, you can do that with a simple command. So if you type in sudo WP cron event cron event list, this will return back all the scheduled jobs that are uh, that are configured to run their next runtime. Then uh, how often those are configured to run. Uh, as I mentioned, if you wanted to see this in the WP admin now, you would have to install a plugin. Now, in addition to just listing out the scheduled events, you can also configure and manage these events with the same command line. Um, to find out what else you can do, you would type in sudo wp help 
and then the name of the command. In our scenario here, it's cron. If you hit enter, you'll get the entire documentation of the WP cron CLI command, and you can manage it here. All right, so the next command I want to show you is how to change your password. Um, if you've ever found yourself locked out of your WordPress website and you're the only admin in the system, and perhaps you've tried to use the reset password via email and that hasn't worked, then there's a very simple way to reset your password or change your password using the WP CLI. So you don't even have to rely on the WP admin dashboard or any of that functionality. So I want to show you that here. The command to change your password is sudo wp user update. And then here's where you need to provide the email address for your user account. Uh, in the sample Bitnami WordPress instance, I think by default it comes with user at example.com. This is where you would put your user email address. Or if you're changing the password for another user, it's their email address that they've used to register on your website. Uh, and then we'll pass in a parameter called user underscore pass, and then just give a, uh, a new password. Uh, so I'll just type in a very insecure password called sample password, and then you hit enter. And it should come back with success updated user number one. Um, so if I go back to the my WP admin for my sample WordPress site, and I type in my username, user, and then sample password. It's let me in, so my password has been reset. The next command I want to walk you through is the install and activation of plugins. So in this scenario, uh, if you have a common set of plugins that you always install on any WordPress website that you create and start development on, then uh, typically you would have to go into the WP admin, find the plugins, uh, install them, then activate them. So instead of going through all of that process, uh, you could just install them through the WP CLI and activate them. So in one command, you can do all of that. And this is good for, again, like I mentioned, common plugins that you uh, uh, install always for all of your WordPress websites. Um, I'll refer to a recent video I did of the top five plugins that I recommend that all websites have. So if you're interested in that, please click on the card above here. Uh, but let's get started with installing some of these common plugins. So let's say I want to install uh, the WordFence firewall, um, the an SMTP plugin and disable comments. These are three plugins that we would want to install and activate. To com the command for that would be sudo wp plugin uh, install and we'll install WordFence, uh, the wp mel SMTP, and uh, disable comments. And then we provide a parameter at the end for activate. So this installs them from the WordPress repository and activates them. There we go. So I ran that command, single command, installed these three plugins and activated all of them. Um, so you could do this for, you could just keep this command handy. And anytime you create a new instance, create a new WordPress website, go to your WP CLI, run this, and those three plugins, uh, or any number of plugins, would be installed and activated. So if I go back to my uh, sample website, login. So I am logged into uh, the sample WordPress uh, website, and if I come back here, uh, we'll see, and we'll see those three plugins, Disable Comments was installed and activated, uh, WordFriend Security, and WP Mail SMTP. Um, so the plugin, uh, the names that I provided on the command line, those come from the WordPress repo name. So if you go to, for example, the WordPress plugins repository and you look at WordFence, this repo name is what um, you need to provide on the command line. Now, along with activation, the same command line utility can be used to deactivate plugins. And this is good if you've installed a plugin 
And now all of a sudden your site becomes inaccessible or there are errors. And for whatever reason, you cannot get into the WP admin. If that's happened to you before, then what you may have done in the past is have log into FTP or SFTP into your server and delete the plugin folder or rename it. That's those are the common suggestions provided, right? But with WPCLI, you can deactivate a plugin using the command line. So to do that, let me show you an example. Let's say I want to deactivate the WordFence plugin. Uh, so you would just type in sudo wp plugin deactivate and then the name of the plugin. Oh, it would be help if I spelled plugin correctly. And there we go. The plugin's been deactivated. The next command I want to show you is primarily for WordPress designers or theme designers or, or developers. If you want to quickly get content on your WordPress site as you're developing it, uh, instead of manually creating posts and pages, you can now run a WP CLI uh, command line tool to generate dummy content for you really quick. So I'll show you that right here. All of these commands will be on the accompanying post on webhostingforbeginners.net, so you can copy and paste from there. So you type this command, and then the next command, which is the WP host generate command. So what I'm what I've done here is there is a service called loramipsum.net. It's a website that can generate loramipsum dummy content. Uh, we're fetching the data from this site, and then we are echoing this, uh, and we're fetching the data and storing it in a variable called content. So we're echoing this content, passing that to the WP host generate command. This is the WP CLI command, and then we're providing a post content and how many posts we want to create with this dummy content. So you can put 10 or you can put five, whatever number of posts you want to create for your needs, you provide it right here. And then you just hit enter. Well, as always, you have to type in sudo, you got that. And it's generated five posts. So let's go back to our WordPress website, go into post and you'll see here it generated 10 posts with dummy content. So we should be able to go here and see there's the Lorem Ipsum content. So this helps you quickly get content on your website for development and designing purposes. The fifth command that I want to walk through is the database search and replace. Um, so this is uh, useful if you're moving or migrating your website from one domain to another domain. You can use this command to search and replace all the references to your old domain with a new domain. Typically you would do this with a plugin or if there is a script provided you would have to go that go run that script against your database. So a couple of old ways of doing this. Uh, with WPCLI they provided you a command to do a search and replace. In addition to domains another user use case would be is replacing some sort of a content string in your database. So if I wanted to uh, remove the word um, post or 11 or something across all of the content in the site, you can use the same command for replacing any content, not just use it for domains. So what you would type in is sudo wp uh, and the command is search and replace. And what you would provide is the old string. In this case, it would be something like uh, post, um, in my example, but if you're doing this for domains, you would do something like www.olddomain.com. This is just an example, but this would be your old domain. And then you would provide the new domain.com and you would run this. Um, but in my example, just to show you, I will replace post with uh, new post. Now there's a couple of parameters that you can provide to this command, and these are uh, pretty important. First one is uh, dash dash skip uh, columns. And then the column that you would want to provide is GUID, the GUID. WordPress documentation states that you should never modify data that's in this column. 
um, for a variety of reasons, and you can read about it on their website. But always, when you're doing the search and replace, even if you're you know going from old domain to new domain, always provide this command. I'm not sure why they don't just provide this by default, but you explicitly have to state skip columns GUID. And then the next parameter is dash dash dry run. So dry run basically runs this command, but doesn't make changes to your database. So this is good if you wanted to do your, again, your old domain to your new domain, and you wanted to see how many changes would be made. So if you provide these two parameters and run this command, this will tell me that there are, in the WP options table, there are three instances of the word post. And then in the WP post table, there are 10 um, uh, instances of the word post that it would replace. So down here it says 13 replacements to be made. Now run the same command, but remove the dry run parameter. And now this will take effect um, uh, in your database. So hit the command again and 13 replacements made. So if I come back here, this post will become new post. And as I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, when you're doing, you know, these kind of changes, make sure you have a backup before you run this, because if you need to revert back, the only option will be to revert or restore your database. Um, and uh, for those of you that are using the Elementor plugin for your uh, page builder, uh, this WP uh, search and replace does not work for content that you've created with uh, the Elementor plugin. For the Elementor plugin, they actually have specified a separate command line. So that would be WP Elementor uh, replace URLs, and then old uh, your old domain, and then your new domain. So this is the uh, command structure if you're using the Elementor plugin for your page building uh, needs. And again, I'll put this command example in the accompanying post on webhostingforbeginners.net so you can check it out. Um, the final thing I want to show you, I, we went through all about five different commands or five different user scenarios, but I wanted to show you that help command one more time, which we looked at earlier and during the um, uh, WP cron uh, item. So the WP help command is basically WP help and then provide the name of your command. Again, you, in this case, it would be search and replace. And again, you have to run this as sudo. And it gives you the documentation and how to use each command. So this is very helpful if you are uh, trying to figure out how a command can help you. You can always run this. The other thing you can go to is the WP CLI uh, commands list. And here, uh, and I'll link this as well on the post. Uh, but these are all the commands that are available in the WP CLI. And when you click on any one of these, for example, um, WP menu, which we didn't look at, but you'll see examples on what you can do and any sub commands that are available for that command. So take a look at this, run the help command when you need to figure out what you're needing to run. And uh, hopefully these types of actions can save you time if you're setting up WordPress websites uh, quite often. All right, so that's the end of the tutorial. We took a look at uh, five different user scenarios that really come in handy when you're either stuck, your WordPress website isn't accessible to you, or just to speed up repetitive tasks that you have to do on every WordPress project that you take on. So hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put those down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. If these are the type of uh, video tutorials that you are interested in, share this with others that may find it useful as well. And um, I've uh, reached over 2,000 subscribers on my channel. So thank you to all of you that have subscribed. So thank you again for watching. And until the next video, take care. <music>